How to work with branch documents in Polarion. Here's uh, an overview of what I'm going to show you uh, in this video. To start off, let's see what is a branch document. And for that, I'll open the Polarium help and look for branch because there's a nice picture of the concept. And you see that the um, there's something called a master document that you then branch, uh, which uh, with each branch operation you get one of these copies. Um, and let's see how that works in practice. So in order to um, see what happens, let's see, um, this will be our master document for this purpose. And um, let's now create one branch out of it. And please know that there is also a reuse operation in Polarion, which is a different mechanism of, of reusing content. So, but today we'll talk about this branch. So let's just create branch and see what happens. So now we see that we created this document and it looks pretty much the same as the uh, original master document. However, the work items appear with the uh, with this dotted um, mark here in the left hand side, which means that these work items are referenced work items. What, they, what it really means is that we cannot change these, um, these items here. But um, in order to do some changes in the work items, we need to go to the um, master document. Let's see what happens if I introduce a change here. It will be reflected on the work item in the uh, in the branch document. Um, now, different options that we can do with these work items here in this branch document are um, sort of when I select one of these items and, and click here in this icon. Basically, we can leave this item as it is. So it reflects the changes from the master document or we can unmark or remove the item. We can freeze and we can overwrite. And then in addition, we can create new items in this document. So let's um, see what happens. So um, let's leave this as is. Um, we'll um, freeze this item to a specific revision of the original. Let's just choose the last one here. So this is now frozen. And let's then do an override operation for the third one. Override really means that there is a new item created here. Um, native item in this document and the, the, uh, the changes in the master will not automatically be reflected here in the in the branch. So let's also actually create a new one, new item here. Branch, like this. And by the way, as a working way of working tip, um, you probably don't want to delete the items here um, in this document if you really want to uh, follow what happens to the scope of the master. Uh, instead, you could do something like overwrite an item here and then, for example, mark that this item actually, well, let's say first, so that this item is actually rejected here in this scope. Yeah, need to get mark the resolution as well. So this is now marked as rejected. So we can clearly see that it's uh, kind of removed from the uh, from scope of the uh, uh, from the uh, branch document. So now that we have these different options here um, for these items, um, let's talk about a bit more what happens to the overwritten item. 
this one. Um, if we look closely its properties here we see that there's a link this is branched from um, to the original item in the uh, in the um, master document. So we can uh, we can use that um, to facilitate um, a sort of a change notification if something happens in the um, um, original item. For example, let's make a change here. But before that, um, in the document properties of this document, let's make sure that so-called um, auto suspect is on or enabled. And now let's make a change, just an article change to this work item here and press save and let's see what happens. Let's now go to the branch document and look at the, the item that was branched out of that one. Um, we see that there's a sort of a icon here which denotes um, the change notification or a suspect link in Polarian terms. Um, we can also filter these suspects if we want to see all the changes that could, uh, come like that from the original document. We can also filter this branch document and look for the suspect. So now it clearly reveals only the suspect items in the um, in the document. And of course we can also look at the the item itself and see that um, there's a this called suspect link from the uh, from the original one. Now in general um, what happens if we introduce some new content um, in the master document. For example, if we create a new item in the master document, like this, or just some paragraph text or maybe some heading here. Let's just create a heading here and let's see what happens. Go to the branch document. So we see that, well, naturally the new things will not come to the to the branch document automatically. Only the kind of the work items are followed if there are references or these, these links. But there's an easy way to get the changes from the uh, from the master. So we can just clearly um, simply copy paste these things to the uh, to the branch document. And now that we paste a work item, it asks if we want to create a reference. Yeah, let's create a reference. And we have it here um, in the uh, in the branch document. So, in order to keep track of these changes, um, other than for the linked um, or these these um, branched work items or written work work items, we can also run a complete comparison to the master document. And we see changes here graphically. But to be more specific on the work items themselves, we can compare the work items one by one. And we see that there are some changes um, in some of the items. This item does not exist. Um, in the master specification. And whenever there are some changes that we want to merge in 
either direction we can launch um, a merge facilitator here in Polarion which really contains a lot of different options and we will not go into details um, in this video but just know that, that there is this merge operation here um, just one thing to note that um, in some cases it might be useful to um, carry out some bulk operations to the work items um, in this branch document for example if you quickly want to override uh, multiple items you can just select um, kind of with a mouse you can just select the items here and if you have the work item properties so you need to have the work item properties here selected on the right hand side you can for example override um, just like that and it might be very practical uh, in some cases when you create a new branch just to select the whole document with Control a for example and carry out some operations for example the override for all the work items in the uh, in the branch document so what other use cases there are for using this branch um, than just the um, um, kind of the obvious of uh, creating some simple uh, variants um, so other use cases might be that you just want to select um, some work items selectively um, for another document for example um, from a specification of a um, product family you just want to select some some um, work items for the uh, for your particular product or another case for test management um, is that um, you can create compilations of test cases um, by putting these referenced items um, into a new new test specification document and by that you can also relatively order the test cases differently for different test runs so I hope this video was useful uh, thanks for watching bye